here with Storm. We're going to continue our work on uh, Leave It. Um, I think uh, because the uh, scenarios that you were telling me about this morning um, with, you know, food just dropping on the ground uh, with kids around and everything, so you know that uh, she, you're not actually telling her to stay or something, so if food just happens to fall down, we want to make sure that we nip that in the bud and she does not go after the food. So for this session, I'm not going to tell her to, uh, you know, stay or anything like that. I want to make sure that she knows that whenever food comes down on the ground, that she is not able to touch it and that she um, doesn't have to always be in a state in order to know that she can't touch food when it does fall. Okay, so I know, yeah, you said she does have a sensitive stomach, so this is a really important command to uh, work on. But uh, we're going to be using, um, right in the beginning here, what we used the last time, baby steps uh, in the beginning of training. So obviously there's food inside. She can hear it. And uh, there's a little hole for a smell to come out, so we don't have to worry about putting a whole entire thing of kibble on the ground, and then, you know, hopefully she doesn't eat it. So we want to make sure that, um, you know, she doesn't ingest anything that, you know, might cause an allergic reaction or an upset stomach. So want to make sure that when we're practicing, we uh, do have uh, complete control over what is on the ground, and, uh, you know, I think she'll do a really good job with this. Yes. And it also helps that, you know, she is tired from daycare, she's been running playing literally like the whole time she's been here. So this is a great time to work on the training with her. Okay. So 
what you saw right there, she knows what we're talking about. She saw the, the uh, food drop on the floor. She did, you know, kind of stand back a little bit, and then she decided, well, I really want to go see what that's all about. So what I did in the beginning, instead of grabbing her by her collar and uh, putting her back into the position I want her to go back in, um, I simply made a, um, this is called positive punishment. It's uh, just like a physical touch. You're doing a correction in real time. And uh, what you're doing is basically uh, getting that your dog's attention off of an object and back up to you. So in the wild, when animals, well, canines correct each other, instead of, you know, poking another dog or wolf, they say, hey, you know, let's not do this or you need to stop doing that. They just use their mouth and go, snap. Stop doing that. So, this is basically the same thing. So when she does go for the object, if she does not listen, that's when you can utilize your physical touch. Obviously, since she's not on the leash, she has a little bit more leeway to do things that she wants to do. And uh, obviously, you can see that she's ignoring the items. This is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Um, but when you do see her ignore you, um, get up to go for the item, what you can do as um, a human to the dog is the same thing. Physical touch, I touched her gently on the side. No, and she knew exactly what was going on. I did block her from getting towards the item, and I told her to get back, and she knew exactly what I was saying. She went right to a sit, gave me a little bit of a little humbug face, you know, why are you making me sit for this? And then she laid down and proceeds to ignore the treats. Very good job. Here, and try it again. So anytime she makes eye contact with the object or she's fixated on it, I want to correct that immediately, get her attention back up to me. She's doing a fantastic job. So what we're trying to uh, do here is make it so when we do have her, you know, um, at home or if she's at the park or something with you, you want to make sure that no matter what, she doesn't have to always, you know, be attached to you on the leash, but no matter what, just for her safety, um, you know, making sure that she doesn't go after whatever is dropped on the ground. So we want to make sure, you know, any kind of scenario that she could possibly be in that, you know, we do... Uh, do things like that, drop things on the ground, and see if she'll be able, if she'll uh, try to go after it. And anytime she starts to get fixated on that item, snap my finger, she looks right back at me, and tell her, good girl, or good. Okay, so leave it doesn't mean that, you know, I have to go back and pick everything up immediately unless it's, of course, you know, medication or something that could possibly upset her stomach. But, you know, certain objects that you don't want her around, like perhaps, you know, if there's a dog that really loves to chew on a certain pair of shoes, it doesn't mean that you always have to, you know, hide them all the time and everything like that. But just making sure that the dog understands boundaries. So if you do have a situation where something falls on the ground, she knows her boundaries. She knows no matter what, I am not allowed to go sniff that piece of steak or investigate that rib that fell on the ground. It's calling my name. 
and uh, the owner should always be the person providing food for her. So that should be the only way that she should get food is through you. Well, she does such a good job. She did a great job leaving the items, which was very, very important. And um, of course, we'll continue working on this uh, with her. Um, but she did a fantastic job today. I'm so happy. As is Nicole here with Storm, uh, we've been working on Leave It. We'll see you later. Bye. Good girl.